Six days to elections, equal uh, conditions for all candidates, no prohibited topics. We are starting the countdown. Hundred fifty minutes of air. Who will be your president? The countdown. Good evening. I'm Miroslava Barchuk, and this is the countdown. I am Pablo Kazarin. According to the tradition, the main discussion of the country starts now. The countdown is uh, an honest discussion and honest analysis of the political biographies of the candidates, their programs, without any taboo and restrictions. Democracy is what will be happening in this studio for the next two hours. We believe that our viewers are to decide both on the destiny of the country, what will they do on the 31st of March, and on the destiny of the candidates who will be here. You will decide whose arguments are more convincing, and that's with the help of our online voting. We'll tell about it later. The participants of the discussion were offered to bring their support groups. To the left are people, uh, members of the election campaign of two candidates, of Igor Smishko and Arkady Karnatsky. Welcome. Good luck to you. We also welcome our experts who will be following this discussion. Igor Burakovsky, Taras Shevchenko, Mikhail Samus, and Vitaly Shabunin are the guests of our studio today. Greetings. Everything that was said will be checked uh, whether there were some manipulations or not truth. Uh, this will be done by the members of Vox Czech. It's time to invite the first participant of the discussion, so please meet, welcome, Arkady Karnatsky. Arkady Karnatsky, 65 was born in Mykolaiv region after working in collective farm and service in the army and as Moscow University of the, named after Patrice Lumumba, worked as the lawyer in Moscow and then started his business there. In 1999, he was running to the State Duma of Russia from the block of the mayor of Moscow, Lushkov, Atechestva Vsya Rasiya. He left Russian citizenship in 2005 after returning to Ukraine, started a great cultural business in 2014, became the MP of the Verkhovna Rada from uh, Petro Poroshenko block. Welcome. Who's supporting you? These are my friends, people who are very close to me. Greetings. And we wish you success. And the next candidate is Igor Smishko. Igor Welcome. Good evening. Igor Smishko, 63. Self-nominated candidate. Uh, uh, Mr. Smishko first informed about his presidential ambitions at the beginning of 2019, writing about that in Facebook. He uh, uh, had the military career in the beginning of 2000, was the first deputy of the uh, Secretary of the Security and Defense Council in 2003, headed the Security Service of Ukraine, was present at the historic uh, dinner during which Viktor Yushchenko, the presidential candidate, was poisoned. Ex-advisor to the President Petro Poroshenko. Good evening, Igor. I would like to also congratulate you with your professional holiday. Today is the day of the security service of Ukraine. Please tell us who are your group of support group. These are activists, uh, people who are volunteers who support us. Good luck to you and to your candidates. Uh, and also to more Alexanders who participate in this discussion, Alexander Shuchenko and Alexander Vilk but they, both of them refused to participate in this program. And today, we will be inter 
reviewing only two candidates and even refusal uh, of the candidate for us, for civil society, is also a marker. Agree with that. Now it's time to tell about uh, the timing. You know that because you signed the, the agreement for this timing. I will explain it to viewers and our experts. Our discussion will be divided into three blocks, national defense and security, legislative initiatives of the president and economic economics, uh, well-being and social protection. Uh, I would request the experts and the audience to ask questions on the topic and also on the timing. Every candidate will have 90 seconds in the beginning of every block to outline uh, the main items of the program. And after that, he will answer the questions of other candidates, audience experts and the hosts. Uh, every candidate will have a program approximately 12-13 minutes uh, to uh, explain uh, uh, the main uh, items of the program. And I would like to remind that our viewers also can join us in our program. There's a survey or, or questionnaire. You can uh, support the candidate whose program is, looks uh, more convincing to you. you. There are three phone numbers, but uh, Alexander Vilkel's phone number will be disconnected. You can and call and select the Mr. Karnatsky or Mr. Smishko. The results will not be representative, but will reflect the opinion of our viewers. Also, experts from Vox Check are monitoring it, uh, and we would like to remind you that we work without commercials. You can watch us on UA first. Uh, we work in the regional branches, UA culture, UA crime, you can uh, watch us with simultaneous uh, translation into Crimean Tata. Also, uh, you, uh, you can watch uh, the countdown on all pages in Facebook and YouTube, and you can select an option English and watch it in English. Also, our uh, listeners are listening to us on uh, the uh, Ukrainian radio. It's time to start the countdown. National security and foreign policy. As I promised, the first block, national security and foreign policy, every candidate will have 90 seconds, and now uh, the strategy will be presented by Arkady Karnatsky, and uh, the time starts now. The law defines the national security as uh, ensuring the defense of the state sovereignty of the country, constitutional order, the rights and freedoms of the citizens from real and potential threats. In Ukraine, in the recent years, the situation with all these components of the statehoodness uh, was not satisfactory, the degree of uh, readiness to defend the, the, the sovereignty, the constitutional order, uh, is very low. The, the capacity to defend is very low, and we understand that uh, we cannot talk about the national defense, and that is why a lot was done to enhance the level of national security. You know what I mean. First of all, strengthening the armed forces of Ukraine, that was the priority. Second, my program as the program of the presidential candidate is to strengthen national security, not with the help of the armed forces and special services, but arming the population 
population and enhancing the level of trust of people to the state. Thank you. You will have more time. Uh, I have several questions. When we were preparing the program, we understood that we'll be asking these questions to you. And you probably answered them before. So it will be great if we now ask that. In your declaration, you mentioned that you own 80% of shares of the declaration of the Cascade Cooperative, which is in Russia. So what is happening with these assets on the territory of Russian Federation? All the assets that I had when I was the citizen of Russia, when I lived in near Moscow and worked there in 2005, when I stopped my Russian citizenship and when I acquired Ukrainian citizenship, they were uh, suspended, stopped, uh, and uh, uh, what is written about these assets now is uh, not understanding of the situation according to the legislation. If a person became the member of the cooperative, despite the fact that for many years the person is not the member of the cooperative, but this record is preserved in the state uh, register. And there are records about not one cooperative, but about many other. Are the businesses of yours are liquidated? We looked at the state register of the Russian Federation. Are the assets are liquidated, but Cascade is not. It's still in existence. It is in existence, and the founders uh, my, uh, are the co-founders with who I created this cooperative. It was created in uh, 19... In 1989, that was the first company I created. It had branches in, U branch in Ukraine, manufacturing branch in Ukraine. Then uh, we closed the branch in uh, Ukraine. I uh, gave my share to are the co-founders when I left this cooperative, and uh, I have no business in uh, Russia now. <coughs> we read your program, we looked at your program, and we did not find any mention of Russia in your program, taking into account the fact that this is the state aggressor committing the crime against our country. Is that just uh, some coincidence of circumstances? Maybe you did not read my program in detail. I, there's a mention of Russia, of Crimea and Donbass, and it clearly says how we can defend ourselves from all the challenges created by Russia, not just Russia. I believe that Europe creates such challenges, and in the, progr the program says about that. Now, and the priority to ask question uh, is uh, uh, given to Mr. Smishko, but if you need time to get prepared, no, I can ask a question. 30 seconds for the question. You are the member of the majority. I have one question. In 2010, there was a resolution of the Verkhovna Rada after the analysis of the condition of the armed forces of Ukraine and the execution of the Budapest Memorandum. And this resolution uh, obliged the government to ensure the real uh, guarantees for implementation. This resolution is the law why the government uh, that was formed by the coalition does not implement this resolution. I did not understand what resolution you mean. I cannot answer for the government just like I cannot answer for the coalition. Yes, formally I am the member of the coalition, uh, just like 301 besides me MPs who signed the coalition agreement. But most, uh, some of them, 
like three political factions left this coalition, but because I was elected to the Verkhovna Rada uh, as uh, part of the Petro Poroshenko bloc, I stay in the coalition, but from the very beginning, from the beginning of 2015, I am the dissident. I do not want to use the word opposition uh, to the uh, faction. Our legislation is such that it uh, does not allow the MP to leave the faction. We have questions from uh, experts. Mikhail Samus, Center of Research of Army Conversion and Disarmament. My question is, uh, uh, well, your biography in 1999, you were the member of Lushkov party. I remember these days, that was the most anti-Ukrainian party, which was very active in Sevastopol and Crimea. And even then, they were saying that Sevastopol and Crimea are Russian lands. Did you support this position of Lushkov then? And how are you planning to liberate Crimea and Donbass? You're right when you characterize this political force and you repeated uh, unconsciously the disinformation which is there. I was not elected to the State Duma of Ukraine. I had an intention because at that time I was the president of the regional uh, 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 chamber of commerce and the entrepreneurs nominated me a candidate and I submitted the documents, but when I found out that I will have to do it as part of the official party, I wrote the uh, application and I did not participate in the election. I removed my candidacy and my attitude to Lushkov and others uh, just like other Ukrainians. Please tell us, you worked as the head of the uh, Chamber of Commerce of Moskovsk region. Was it when Evgen Primakov headed the Chamber of Commerce of Russian Federation? What relations you had with Evgen Primakov, who headed the government uh, of Russian Federation? He was the uh, intelligence officer. What connected you? Uh, there was no connection between uh, us. Uh, I became the president of the uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, long before Mr. Primakov was appointed to his position. Did he help you? No, never. Uh, oh, once we have uh, made joint picture with him just before the elections. Uh, uh, <coughs> um, so you did not see what sort of people they were. Let me sp speak to the very end. So when uh, 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 on the eve of that elections, uh, 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 I had a meeting with the leaders of the Chamber of Commerce. They uh, asked me, would you like to have Primakov as the president of the Chamber of Commerce? And I um, opposed that idea, and very soon I was dismissed from the from my position in the Chamber of Commerce. Why did you uh, uh, participate into the, in the Russian politics? Uh, I stepped into the politics because I uh, opposed uh, unfair and honest behavior and uh, uh, I would not tolerate justice. I never cooperated personally with any political leaders of the Russian Federation. Uh, Vitaly Shabunin, Center for Counteraction to, uh, to Corruption. Uh, uh, Mr. Karnatsky, whom would you like to uh, appoint the head of a 
was BU and how many officers of this BU pretend that they fight against corruption. Uh, so my uh, slogan is that we should uh, dismiss all the politi current political leaders and give all the powers to people. And uh, uh, I believe that currently we have uh, many professionals and honest people among the SBU officers. But for last 20 years, those law enforcement bodies like uh, special services were cheered by an honest people. Uh, I do not have my own candidate as of the moment because I believe that it is a crime to form your team before elections. This uh, uh, will prevent very good Ukrainians from uh, uh, coming into these positions after I am elected the president. Mr. Burakovsky, professor of the Kiev Mohila Academy, I would like to come to the uh, defense and foreign policy. Uh, 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 what do you think are the main threats uh, for Ukraine uh, from uh, Russia, and what are the main threats for Ukraine from uh, the from the European Union? Uh, the threats are similar uh, uh, by m by means. Uh, um, uh, by matter, but, uh, but uh, different by means. Nobody is interested in independent and strong Ukraine. Uh, uh, and we have witnessed this after 20 eight years of changes, so-called changes going on in Ukraine. On the one hand, we are speaking about um, uh, necessity of uh, European development, but we pass all the draft laws which are based on Russian examples. So we should make uh, military uh, uh, offensive to Russia and the, uh, military defensive to Russia and uh, uh, morally defensive to the impact of European Union. Now we have 90 minutes for Mr. Smishko to present his uh, vision of the uh, defense and foreign policies. This is the sphere of direct responsibility of the president. He has all the powers uh, uh, through the whole vertical. The main uh, external threat is quite understandable. This is the war with our neighbor in the part of the territory is occupied, and we have big military forces at our border, which are ready to cross it at any moment. We also have an internal threat without realization of this internal threat, uh, Kremlin won't be able to uh, uh, start to launch its external force. This internal threat is corruption. In order to do this, we should overcome poverty in Ukraine. In line with Article 1 of the Constitution, Ukraine is a democratic social state. Well, when we try to destroy uh, the middle class all the time, which should be the basis of the state. Uh, uh, the theft and uh, dissolution of the state resources uh, combined with this internal threat creates very bad preconditions to the national security. In one of your interviews, we have found a phrase, by the year 20. Five, we never looked at the Russian Federation as uh, our uh, 
uh, competitor or enemy. As the head of ISBU, what did you do to stop activity, activities of pro-Russian organizations in Crimea, which later on uh, promoted the uh, pro-Russian and supported pro-Russian uh, separatist views in Crimea. I, I, you, you do not know the information. Here I was presented as a uh, military professional by 2005. Um, uh, I, it, I was the head of SBU from uh, uh, September 2003 up to the uh, February 2005. Before that, I was only a military man. And uh, before that, Russia was never seen as an enemy. Uh, before that, we had the issue of Tuzla. We had the arguments in Tuzla situation. As a, a, an ordinary citizen of Ukraine, visiting Crimea in 2003, 2004, 2005, in my interviews uh, with Leonid Grach, I understood his separatist views. At that time, the ISBU was doing what it uh, was ought to do. We all knew uh, about those people who had separatist views. Of course, as a serviceman, as a military man, we could not be politicians and uh, Mm, uh, by 2005, Russia never crossed the limits, and uh, only in 2005, when Putin three times congratulated uh, Yanukovych, uh, we, uh, we had opened cases the, uh, against parallel servers of the main election commission and uh, some uh, other cases and launched the investigation. And uh, so that was our uh, socialist, uh, our social convention, not to respond to the separatist views in Crimea. In late 1990s, I saw that. We, 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 we kept all the separatists under control. Uh, Mr. Karnatsky, you have a question to Mr. Smishko. In your program, you uh, uh, speak about seven steps aiming to bring Ukraine into order. Do you be really believe that in this political system, under this political elite, so-called criminal elite, you will be able to do at least one step in line with your plan? I am absolutely sure that I will be able to implement all my seven steps, but you are absolutely correct that nobody uh, brings in the question about coming back to the Constitution, about changing the economic model, aimed at uh, um, uh, pro development of the middle clan, uh, class. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, the president should become garant of the Constitution and ensure all those things, proper work of ISBU, etc., and he even can uh, influence the economic policy in terms of democracy, uh, social policy. Now, Taras Shevchenko, our expert, the director of the Center of Democracy and Rule of Law. 
I would like to ask you about the reform of the security service, but that's the question of Vitaly Shabunin. I would like to ask you into which team uh, would you be ready to go? I mean the leaders of the election campaign and talking about the threats for the state uh, I did not find any details of uh, how will you address the demographic issue. There were several items. I wrote the book, uh, 250 pages. Uh, it's the last uh, national ideas and strategy of Ukraine. Where, do you where are you going, Europe? But I, that, that explains it, everything. But I'm sure that the quality of any government, any coalition is five elements. Culture, education, protection of health, health care, ecology, and demography. If this indicators do not grow, then that is anti-constitutional policy according to our constitu constitution. And who would you join if anyone would have a program based on which you could get united? You cannot get united around uh, leaders. We need to get united around the programs. And we are ready to uh, get united with those who want to build democracy. Mikhail Samus. My question is more specific on to, to national security and defense. How do you believe the system of military cooperation and defense industry should develop? Because I believe that this is the problem at uh, one plus one uh, program, there was the general prosecutor speaking, and I asked him what will he do with the military cooperation. The security service uh, is responsible for counter reconnaissance. Uh, and uh, then there is the Security and Defense Council, but there is a special commission on military uh, cooperation. Uh, we have this defense budget, which is closed. I understand why it is closed. Almost 99% of our equipment, of our uh, armaments and weapons are old uh, weapons from times of the Soviet Union. The political will is needed, and we need to execute the duties on uh, intelligence, counterintelligence, to ensure the defense of our, sta uh, of our state. Two brief questions from me and then Vitaly Shabunin. Who would you appoint the head of the security service if you win at the elections? We have two organizations, all Ukrainian uh, um, uh, uh, organization of uh, veterans. There are many political professionals. Now there are those who are not in power. In our team, we have several people like that. I do not want to name anyone specifically, but believe me, no one knows better than we who can do it better. This will be done on a competitive basis. There will be two or three candidates discussed by the society. If the society has some questions or facts, then there should be some filter. If we do not have a Congress, which is a filter, then the society should become such a filter. Uh, the recent visit of Boyka and Medvedchuk to Moscow and negotiations with Medvedev about Russian gas, do they have the signs of high treason? Yes. I am a military person. I have never been in politics. That's the first time I go into politics. I was not elected into executive bodies. I do not understand how during the war you cannot call war a war. How 
cannot you use the protocol of war during the war. You will not go to the hospital to surgeon who is not executing the surgical protocol during the surgery. According to laws of uh, war, what happened is the element of high treason. Also, we need to give the chance to Vitaly Shabunin to ask question. Mr. Smishko, you position yourself as an expert who uh, uh, acts uh, within the uh, legislation. You have in the program the issue about return of capital, especially the capital which was stolen. How do you and uh, see it, how will you be implementing it. You need to do everything according to the law, I mean the security service, the political will should be there. All the structures which are to fight corruption, they need dozens of years to get the database, to get all the agents, the, constitution, the institutional memory, uh, they uh, uh, have uh, to understand that they need to fight corruption. Maybe they are doing something else. And then we need to ask them about their professional work. And the Committee on uh, Intelligence, we will work only with those who people believe. The political will is needed, and according to the law, the structures which are in place, they can do it within a month term. We have questions from the regions. Uh, these are from all regions of Ukraine, including occupied territories, uh, Crimea and Sevastopol separately. Every candidate can select a region to hear the question. Mr. Karnatsky, Mykolaiv region, my native land. Yes, we do have a question. Esteemed candidate, uh, how should the uh, ship building develop in Ukraine. Uh, what is this, this the situation around the Mykolaiv uh, shipyard and there's the debt of 600 million? And what do you think about what will happen uh, to Ukraine cruiser? You have only one minute to answer. Too many questions. Shipbuilding, it's practically eliminated. Uh, on purpose, so that Ukraine uh, is no longer shipbuilding state, the country that can build serious military vessels. This private, the privatization is illegal, like all the privatization in Ukraine for these 28 years. And uh, if we uh, uh, mention return of assets that were stolen from Ukraine in my program, I provide for creation of international tribunal and uh, international special services, financial services will be involved to return what was stolen. As to restoration of uh, shipbuilding, we need to start from professional education, vocational education, because we practically have no specialists and no system of training the specialists. The problem is very big, it is to be correct. And now, Igor Smishko, you select the region. Cherkasy region. Central Ukraine. What should be the strategy of the development of youth and sports in Ukraine? What steps are to be made to, to the improve the situation? When I was talking about five main things, especially about demog demography, Margaret Thatcher was saying there are countries where there are no natural resources, but the main thing is people, and people are youth. In Switzerland, where 
I uh, worked as the diplomat for two years. They have the Ministry of Defense, Sports and Youth. The defense is combined with the support of youth and sports. With our defense doctrine, if we want to have some strategic reserves, this should be issue number one. But this should be a state policy which will stimulate our people to be better educated, be healthy, go in for sports and have social lifts, not to leave Ukraine. This should be the state care, the special state program as one of the main priorities. And uh, now uh, we can, uh, uh, we will ask our friends from Vokscheck. If you notice something, please tell us. Thank you. I would like to mention that now we have seven members of the team Vokscheck. We thank you, friends, for your support and assistance. That's very difficult. As to Mr. Karnatsky's speech, we noticed some. Uh, uh, certain things. Mr. Karnatsky said that our legislation is such that it does not allow the member of parliament to leave the faction. In fact, according to the law, you can leave the faction, but then the party will decide whether uh, this MP should have the mandate or not. And then Mr. Karnatsky said that in program there is a mention about uh, Russia Russia, Crimea, and Donbass. Russia is not mentioned. Donbass and Crimea, yes, but there's only such words as counteraction to aggression and annexation. As to Mr. Smishko, we request you not to make some ger generalizations that all privatization for 28 years was illegal. There was some legal privatization like Riverishtal and another common on elimination of the middle class. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't say that, but basically, uh, you mentioned that the middle class is eliminated. There's no deep uh, research on the middle class, but there is an index which defines the distribution of wealth among people, and now it's uh, uh, getting better. I am Vox check for Vox check about uh, that wasn't Mr. Smishko, but Mr. Karnatsky, who mentioned uh, who mentioned uh, the and uh, told privatization was uh, illegal. Our experts are not uh, serious. No, okay, we check the experts. Iskandar, uh, Iskandar Baliv wanted to ask a question. You can ask it in the next block. Now we'll move to another block. But now my favorite thing, voting, who's winning now? Igor Smishko is winning, 98 against 2%. This is the, these results are not final, and they're not representative. Well, they're not final. Don't get sad, Arkady. And now we're starting the second block of our program. We're starting. Legislative initiative. We'll be discussing legislative initiatives offered by the candidates. So first, Arkady Karnatsky, 90 seconds. Legal actions of the president of Ukraine can change the whole country. In my program, I write that as the president of Ukraine, I can conduct revolution legally from the top by the Order number one, to stop and prohibit the activity of all political parties and uh, civil society organizations whose activity during 28 years uh, brought Ukraine to where it is now. By order number two, to make Maidan legal, to create in Ukraine the body of direct uh, people's uh, um, demonstration of will. And order number three, to stop 
up uh, all the uh, regulations of the cabinet of ministers and bylaws of the cabinet of ministers because uh, this is how anti-constitutional, uh, uh, how unconstitutionally the legislation is changed. And all the legislation is to be amended. We need to pass the new uh, constitution of Ukraine because all problems start from the constitution of Ukraine. And my draft law uh, is the draft law on the agricultural lands, and that is what the farmers and the state of Ukraine are looking for. Thank you, Arkady, but I have a question. Uh, many times you mentioned that you are a lawyer by background, but how the presidential decree can uh, impose a ban on the activities of all the political parties. Uh, I uh, mentioned that according to order no, to decree number one, the uh, activities of political parties that belong to Ukrainian elite. Article uh, number 37 of our Constitution says that uh, those political, political, those political parties which counteract uh, to the uh, uh, human rights, etc., they it should be prohibited by the presidential decree. And then all the state bodies should take technical measures and implement that decree. But how you will, uh, how you will uh, order this? It smells like manipulation. I have a, a question to the experts. It's not a question to the candidate. It's a question to the experts. Does the president uh, have this opportunity and these powers? This looks like a very free interpretation of the Constitution, that if you don't like the activities of any political party, you can uh, prohibit it. Um, uh, there is a clear procedure reflected in the Constitution and in the uh, legislation, and the President uh, has no powers to suspend activity of any uh, party. Uh, part 3 of Article 36 says that the president should uh, issue the decrees which are obligatory for implementation of the entire territory of Ukraine. Then Article 102 says that he is the guarantor of the security of this. You are not a lawyer, you do not understand. I, I am a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Then you are a bad lawyer. I am a lawyer. I am not a cre uh, candidate, but I am a lawyer. Planning this uh, show, we tried to stack with the powers and competencies of the president. And uh, when we designed our third block, we understood that the president is unable to be responsible for the well-being of all Ukrainian people. We are not in Russian Federation. For a short comment, on the first day, you will make this decision about suspension, uh, etc. The next day, the parliament will come together and uh, announce an impeachment to you. I would encourage you to make more uh, specific statements if you suspend or repeal uh, the force of which uh, laws, uh, how Ukraine would uh, 
continue to live and function in the period when you will have no laws. Ukraine would uh, uh, live uh, very happily because uh, Ukrainian constitution is a direct law. It, it will live in line with this law. Then the president, as a head of the state, has the right and duty to uh, interfere each time when he uh, when sees any violation of the human rights. Vitaly Shabunin, 30 seconds, and 30 seconds for the answer. In your program, you wrote that you will destroy the... Uh, control over courts uh, in one day. Probably you mean the uh, uh, qualification commission of the judges. This is the body which uh, is at the top of the uh, judiciary vertical. Uh, uh, but how, as a president, in, in one day will resolve the problem of uh, to this Buddhists. You mentioned only one item, a line in my program. When, first, uh, when I will uh, prohibit activities of all the elite party and uh, the activities of the elite will be prohibited, then this court uh, that is what I mean. Irina Shiva, the Jure Foundation, uh, continuing the topic of the judiciary reform, you suggest uh, that uh, the judges should be elected by uh, uh, the citizens. This system exists in many uh, states in the USA, uh, but it is very heavily criticized because of the non-transparent fundraising and uh, funds used for the elections of judges. Uh, don't you think that oligarchs will have impact on this? As a lawyer, I know how the election of judges uh, happens in many countries of the world. Uh, we can recollect uh, uh, times when uh, the judges were elected by ordinary people. I mean, in my program, only the first instance courts and judges of the first instance, uh, instance courts. Denis Marchuk, all Ukrainian Agrarian Council. In your speech you mentioned that your legislative initiative will be about the circulation of the farmlands and that everybody uh, stands for the land market. Uh, okay, how will you involve financial instruments into the land market, which is today uh, not ready, according to your statement. My uh, draft law now, uh, number uh, 5535 one, um, uh, was registered more than a year ago, uh, two years ago, uh, and uh, this uh, draft law prevented us from passage of the law which would open the wild uh, market of land, uh, of uh, farmland circulation. I should ask now my question because this is the proper time for it. We have repre 
representatives of the Crimean Tatar Majlis and I would like to ask you what is your attitude towards the creation of the Crimean Tatar Autonomous uh, uh, Republic on Crimean Peninsula. I stand for the cultural uh, uh, autonomy of the Crimean Tatars but not for the territorial autonomy of the Crimean Tatars. Uh, so this is a very clear position. Thank you. Mm. Uh, now it's time to give the floor to the second candidate for description of his legislative initiative. Three times. As a military diplomat, for 10 years I lived and worked in real democracies in the U.S., Switzerland, and Germany. I am a military, but I believe sincerely that we need just to implement Constitution. We have a wonderful Constitution. Venice Commission said several times that as the text of the Constitution is wonderful, but no one was developing the laws, uh, the law uh, on ensuring the activity of the president and the impeachment of the cabinet, the law on the cabinet of ministers, the Verkhovna Rada, and the opposition in the Verkhovna Rada, on local self governance, government, which would develop the provisions of the constitution that we are democracy. Democracy is, means three branches. We have authoritarian oligarchic system, but how the presidential administration uh, governs, but not what it is responsible for. And then one more law, which differentiates uh, differentiate between the uh, professionals and political appointees. The president has to submit the initiative to introduce amendments into the law so that the system of laws he becomes uh, coherent with the system itself uh, so that there should be the real control over the uh, legislative authority. My question is such. You uh, very often uh, uh, go to TV channels of Muraev and Medvedchuk. So what do you think about freedom of uh, speech and information security. So was this uh, 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 basically uh, distinction? You mix up moral and legal part. Moral, talking about moral part, I am your ally, but legally. The security service is the department of the defense of uh, the statehood. So the TV channels, uh, uh, what do, uh, do you, uh, as the president, how do you uh, see it? I believe that the issue of demonopolization, the oligarchization refers to information policy as well. There are four elements, I mean, economy, diplomatic, political, and information. In information, the state should not allow any uh, influence that ruins the statehood. Uh, for that, we need to put specialists, the Department of uh, Defense of National Statehood. And uh, my presence at the TV channels invite me to other TV channels. Give us the chance to go to other channels. We'll be there. You are here. Thank you. There's a question from audience, but the first one will be Arkady Kurt. If you have a question, but if not, we will start. It's on legislative initiatives. The question is the same. Everything's fine, what you suggest, but there's no candidate who would have bad proposals in the program. But I ask you again, how will you be able to do it? in conditions when everything is under oligarchs uh, and their political parties. Uh, I believe only when they are removed we will be able to do what you plan. 
Thank you for the question. My life till 2005, practically for 10 years, I was the head of the intelligence community of the country. No one knows better than me what is the origin of the capitals and political elites. And no one but me knows better who are apolitical professionals who were pushed uh, out of the system. They are to be invited to work with oligarchs, the representative of the Department of Counter uh, uh, Intelligence goes to anti monopoly committee and asks how this was created. All the energy is in the hands of oligarchs. Thermal generation is very expensive, is mixed up with nuclear gas transportation. Uh, so it's about demonopolization. Then the process will start. I remember at the beginning of 2000, in Russian Commerzant, there was an article, the Czechist hook, uh, the head of the Federal Security Service wrote it. He said that in the 1990s, Russia fell into the into the abyss, but they just, uh, but the Czechist hook saved it. Uh, but we see uh, what happened to Russia because of that. Should I provide comments? We have very active experts today. I see the hands. So please introduce yourself. Good evening, Roman Sova Alexander, Center of Civil uh, Freedoms. We are from the Center of Legislative Defense. These two initiatives, legislative initiatives, they are ratification of a Rome statute which allows Ukraine to become full-fledged member of the International Criminal Court and ratification of Istanbul Convention, which allows to legalize punishment for uh, home, uh, for domestic violence. Uh, my attitude is positive. I have always supported, uh, and when there was no uh, chance, I, I, I wrote about that in Facebook, Rome, and, uh, Rome statute. Uh, if we are not members, how do we want to punish uh, the military crimes? It starts from not calling war a war, then uh, uh, we uh, started not mobilizing Mobilization, but uh, we proceeded with ATO as to Istanbul. Then, once we are building democracy, of course, I'm for that. I'm supporting. 30 seconds for question, 34 answer. Who starts? Let's. I'm for gender equality. Let's give the floor to ladies. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Tatiana, uh, Natalia Linnik, Committee of of, uh, voters of Ukraine, what is the mechanism of your third law for uh, law on development of democracy? What needs to be done for existence of at least two uh, parties founded on the uh, ideology of democracy? These are the laws written not by me, but by the global civilization. Look at Great Britain and the US, where there are uh, two systems. You cannot limit the number of parties, but two are a conservative democratic, another one liberal democratic. And we will have to do something with the parties, but we need to look at the Constitution, and the President can initiate it by the Constitutional Court. Is there provision on uh, implementing the laws of the Constitution in the program of the party? But that's up to Constitutional Court, not the president to decide on that. 300 parties is the threat to democracy. I am also for gender equality. That is why I would like to give the 
chance to Vitaly Shabunin to ask the question. Mr. Smishko, after the revolution of dignity, we lost the chance to uh, reform the judicial vertical. We have the Supreme Court where quarter of judges are not uh, fair. We have the Constitutional Court which prohibited the, the illegal enrichment uh, and we have legalized courts of Maidan. How will you as the president resolve this problem according to the legislation and the constitution? For that again, the president has enough powers, just the security service, if it is professionally well oriented, will research that. We need to take the American practice, you know, if you want to be the federal judge, you just sign the rules of professional ethics and you open yourself up to the Federal Bureau, illustration of letters, the expenditures of the members of the family, and then if uh, you are asked to explain 80% signing, but they will never, uh, but if there was some violation, they will never get the uh, pension. Iskander Bariev uh, from Crimean Tata Center. My question is, Mr. Karnatsky uh, demonstrated that he's not competent uh, in law according to uh, indigenous people. How will you execute the right of the Crimean Tatars as indigenous people? Answer that. I am for unitarity of the state of Ukraine, which was paid uh, by the blood. But I am for Crimean Tatar autonomy, especially now. We will need to look at how to uh, put it to, to do it. But Crimean Tatar people deserve autonomy on their land. The question to Mr. Smishko, what's your attitude to the operation the, uh, 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 of Israel uh, uh, who, uh, uh, well, what, what it's about Palestine terrorists who killed uh, the uh, athletes. Uh, Twice I was a chairman of the Committee on Intelligence, uh, and uh, uh, twice I uh, participated in the delegation to the International Intelligence Committee. I have good relations with our Israeli colleagues, and uh, many times I suggested to uh, develop such a body in Ukraine, and unfortunately many times this process was stopped, while Ukraine needs very much such a body. In one of your interviews you mentioned that you have a lot of uh, materials which could uh, compromise uh, Ukrainian politicians. Uh, uh, no, uh, do you know something uh, uh, suspicious or bad about uh, uh, Mr. Karnatsky? It's an incorrect question about my colleague who is also running for the presidency. <coughs> so let's uh, again give the floor to the Mm, experts, Mr. Tarashevchenko, you mentioned many times that everything should be done based on constitution and legislation. So the president acts on the basis of constitution and based on the law. The same is true about Ukr uh, Abaron um, Prom, about appointment of the Nabu leader, etc. Uh, it, will you repeal that legislation? I will initiate uh, the repealing of that uh, um, non-constitutional laws. 
In SBU, there was much attention given to the improper actions in the SBU, and only one good investigation was under my leadership. Unfortunately, I haven't heard your uh, specific answer. You mentioned in your program that you are ready to support the uh, integrity of, court, of courts based on the uh, uh, joint work of uh, uh, public and uh, uh, NGOs uh, bodies. So what do you plan to do? In many democracies, uh, including the United States, they have a triple controlling or supervisory system. Uh, they supervise finance, they supervise the powers, and they supervise implementation of uh, um, uh, mandate. Uh, of, uh, of course, broad public and NGOs are the last uh, word to say about uh, the proper supervision system. Actually, uh, this is proper dialogue between the candidates and civil society, which is possible only on our TV channel. Uh, and the next uh, section of our program, Vox Populi, you should choose one region and you will hear the question from that region. So Odessa region, in a moment you will hear a question from the Odessa region. What are intentions about the moratorium on farmlands, whether you will repeal it or remain in force? Many times I uh, spoke on that issue, uh, and I believe that a moratorium on farmlands uh, acts against the Ukrainian farmers, but first we should pass the law about circulation of the farmlands, which would prevent potential uh, expropriation of uh, farmers' land. Uh, and uh, which would allow to use this land to be used only by Ukrainian farmers and uh, many other precautions like uh, minimal uh, price, uh, prohibition to sell uh, this uh, farmlands to the banks uh, and foreigners and prohibition to use it as a bank plan pledge or collateral. Uh, my father's uh, um, and sisters were from Vinnytsia region, so I choose Vinnytsia. Uh, the Council of Churches has big impact on the uh, uh, politics in this state. How uh, should we uh, separate uh, uh, religion and politics in this country? I believe that we should have our own um, uh, uh, Orthodox Church, which is independent from Moscow. We have adopted Christianity and developed it uh, on the one-sixth of the mm, uh, uh, onshore territories of land but I stand for the freedom of religious communities and I stand for non-interference of the state into religious communities. And now, under these war condition, uh, conditions of war, we do not recognize sufficiently the role of uh, Patriarch Philaret in uh, support of the 
counter-reaction to this aggression. So I believe that the state and religion should be separated from each other. Now our friends from the Vox Czech will comment uh, for the statements you made during last 30 minutes. Uh, I would like to thank to Mr. Karnatsky about your, uh, for your statement about uh, land, uh, farm lands and re repealing uh, of the moratorium. Uh, actually, Taras Shevchenko uh, said everything uh, quite uh, correctly. Mr. Karagnatsky suggested to uh, uh, issue a decree uh, prohibiting the activities of political parties. I just reminded it to our uh, spectators. Mm, also, Mr. Karnatsky mentioned that uh, there are good examples around the world when the judges of the uh, not only pr uh, first but the second instance courts are elected by citizens, but this exists only in Switzerland, in Europe, and in some states in the United States, but only in some of them. Uh, Mr. Smishko, I have to apologize for, uh, for my mistake in previous section, but uh, I would like to uh, mention that uh, there is uh, the dr there are two draft laws about impeachment to the president. Now, again, the results uh, of uh, voting. Who, who is supported by our viewers? Now, the balance is still the same. 2% for Kadi Karnatsky, 98 for Igor Smishko. You can call only once from one phone number. We were trying to make it impossible to, to manipulate. 2,800 people participated in voting. I would like to remind you that's not social logical survey. Now we wrapped up this part and in a minute we'll proceed with the economic issues. Uh, friends, we've mentioned already that we understand the president has no influence on economic part because it's more within the powers of the cabinet of ministers. But we realize that anyone who will uh, come to us to the countdown program will be talking about their own uh, economic initiative. So everyone has 90 minutes to talk about their understanding of how this sphere is to be reformed. Mr. Karnatsky, your 90 seconds. Uh, please uh, uh, pay attention to uh, what our hosts believe. Uh, the president has nothing to do with regulation of the economics, but the president is to be blamed in everything. We are not saying that, but that's that's what we believe. The president has uh, high powers, big powers, and the problem is that the level of the society, of politicians and experts, uh, they are not even thinking about what I'm talking about. I'm ready to have a public discussion with anyone. I believe that the president not just have the, does not just have the right, but has to stop any crime, including the crimes committed by political elite. That is his constitutional duty. He has all the powers for that. And when we remove all the political elite will have good economic laws, good uh, changes in economics and social sphere. Till we remove political elite, we will see no changes in anything. All programs will be just the fairy tales. 
One comment, just theoretical, political elite is defined by people when voting at parliamentary elections. My program uh, explains what is political elite. Okay, then I have another comment. Uh, I took it from your program. You said that if Ukraine is rich and successful, occupied territories will want to return to Ukraine. Uh, have I uh, uh, understood it wrongly? Yes. First, it says that one of the main reasons of separatism in Ukraine is that this political criminal elite uh, to call the powers from local communities, from a village, uh, municipal councils, and that's uh, how the negative attitude of citizens of Ukraine to authorities started. And when we return all these powers, uh, well, then only we'll be able to restore the economy and then the well-being will grow and there will be no reasons for separatism. I would like to draw your attention to one thing. When you applaud these words, you agree with the thesis that Ukraine is to be blamed in separatism that was born in the south or no, 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 I'm not distorting. Uh, we do not hear you, only uh, I have a mic. I have even two mics. I just want to remind that uh, Southern Korea is much richer than Northern, but that doesn't influence the fact that Pyongyang tries to uh, join Seoul. And we need to understand that what happens to occupied territories will be decided in Moscow, and Ukrainian citizens are hostages of the situation, and even if tomorrow they want to, to, to implement some changes, they will not influence the desire of Moscow to keep these territories at any price. This is just a comment of a person who was born and grew up in Simferopol and who left Crimea only in 2014. But that's just my comment. And now the questions. And we can start from Mr. Smishko. If you have a question, if you need more time, then we'll start from experts. Miroslava, decide. I believe we did not give floor to Andriy Yeroshov from the Union of uh, Entrepreneurs. Uh, Andrei, I would like to ask you, please tell us what are the proposals uh, which will be the document that you will submit to the Verkhovna Rada to improve the business climate in the country. I answered that question. In order to improve the business climate, first of all, we need to stop and that's within the powers of the president. We need to stop the bylaws and regulations, to suspend the regulations of the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine, because every lawyer will tell you all corruption uh, component of the law is uh, implemented by uh, regulations of the cabinet of ministers. If we apply the constitutional norms first and then we'll change the whole legislation. Vitaly Shabunin, which regulations can you uh, enumerate four regulations, three? I can name them all. Just name only three. I can name all of them because all regulations of the cabinet ministers. You want to suspend all the regulations of the cabinet of ministers? Yes, because all of them are corruption and they uh, are obstacles to conducting a separate, uh, entrepreneurial uh, 
uh, activities like procurement of medicines for uh, the uh, uh, oncology patients. No, I mean the uh, regulations which uh, have some corruption component and which are obstacles to entrepreneurial activity. Igor Burakovsky, I listened to uh, you. You uh, will receive impeachment for ruining Ukrainian economy. A technical question. You know, as businessmen, there are problems related to financing. From your point of view, which policy should be conducted by the National Bank? Targeting of the inflation or maintaining the stability of the exchange rate? The National Bank should do what is provided by the law. They need to do everything which is within its competencies. And the main task of the National Bank is not to allow hyperinflation at any condition. So all financial instruments which are at disposal of the National Bank are to be used by it so that in Ukraine there's no hyperinflation. That's the main thing. Thank you. Uh, tell us, why don't you go to work? In March, 111 MPs uh, didn't vote a single time. One of them is Arkady Karnatsky. You did not vote uh, in Verkhovna Rada, you did not vote in March, do you? Don't you go to work? I don't vote starting from the beginning of this session. Then why do you need the mandate on the 30th of August? I registered my application about leaving the faction of uh, uh, Petro Poroshenko. The experts are mistaken. Um, uh, I am uh, fr uh, was elected uh, by the majority constituency, but the rules of procedure do not allow the MP to leave the um, faction. But what about uh, 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 re uh, revoking, uh, uh, returning your mandate? I work for my uh, voters in my constituency. I work every day. Okay, you decide. Please introduce yourself. Take the mic and ask the question. Sergei Parchomenko, uh, Movement Liberate Crimea. Uh, That's quite an interesting question. We forget that the third candidate is Alexander Vilko. We uh, uh, give him the black sign because he... Uh, but there's also the issue of, of existing the free trade zone in Crimea. What's your attitude to that? My attitude to free economic zone of Crimea is negative because I believe that this is legitimizing the jurisdiction of occupational authorities in Crimea. Ukraine passing this law back in 2014, this way legitimized its relations. If you read this law attentively, there's article that from what is manufactured in Crimea, uh, you, that the state procurements can be done. I believe that this law is to, had to be cancelled a long time ago. These are the answers uh, of uh, uh, Mr. Karnatsky. Now, 90 seconds for Igor He will talk about economic issues. Igor Smeshko, you have 90 seconds. Uh, the president is not responsible for the economic activities and for uh, activities of the government, uh, uh, but he is guarantor of the Constitution. Article 1 of the Constitution stipulates about democracy and its foundation. The uh, democracy 
is not possible about, uh, among slaves and impoverished people. There should be middle class, there should be uh, well-paid professionals, the teachers, doctors, uh, military pensioners uh, and pensioners in developed uh, uh, democracies, pensioners are middle class who can travel and uh, uh, live decently. Uh, uh, the annual uh, statement uh, of the president are devoted quite often to uh, the things which are not important. Why you try to destroy that model of industrial economy which you had back in 1991? One. So the uh, annual presidential statement to the parliament should uh, uh, stimulate establishment of the economic model which would allow Ukraine to flourish. Pavlo and me felt concerned when we read uh, your statement about the uh, our relations with IMF and uh, you uh, wrote that there are some uh, features of the external uh, governance uh, and that within a year we should pay all the debt, pay off all the debts. <coughs> we believe that uh, uh, our foreign partners who make pressure on our authorities in promotion of reforms, they look like our allies uh, uh, in the uh, development of this country. Uh, uh, I disagree that uh, disagree with quite often statement that IMF wants something from us. IMF is a financial organization which uh, gives money and wants to earn its interest rate. They are not working for the development of democracy in our country, but uh, the tariffs on heating, electricity, gas supplies uh, um, had grown between three up to four and five times. Mm, uh, and this, uh, uh, they, uh, our uh, authorities continue to say, continuously say that these are market uh, prices while we do not have market salaries, mm, while a lot of natural resources are smuggled to the European markets. Uh, I encourage experts to get ready with their questions. Do you have questions? Mr. Karnatsky, you may ask your question now or later. We have a question from the uh, all Ukrainian National Agrarian Council. Uh, then the question to Mr. Smishko. Uh, we believe that there are a lot of monopolies in Ukrainian monopoly. Please pay attention at the monopoly of uh, uh, mineral fertilizers when inside Ukraine they are more expensive than uh, uh, in neighboring countries. You mentioned something about uh, land bank, whether only land bank will have the right to buy uh, land uh, or other banks. Israel has uh, um, uh, good uh, 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 solution to this issue and the United States offer good option. I suggest to write down in our legislation that only citizens of Ukraine or Ukrainian state should uh, have the right to own land plots. Uh, uh, but before doing this, we should 
make a cadaster of farmlands. Romantsova Alexandra, center of citizens' rights. How do you think whether Ukrainian state should pay pensions in the occupied territories and uh, again, the question about economic zone in Crimea. As for the economic zone in Crimea, it's uh, uh, improper solution. We had to defend Crimea. We had the uh, opportunity to defend Crimea within the first seven days of occupation. And the first question was about about pensions in the occupied uh, uh, territories. Of course, the state is responsible for pensioners in those territories. We have paid the 60 billion hryvnia uh, for this um, period, uh, while we are paying 40 percent of uh, military pensions, and some of those uh, military men, they fight against us. So we have to uh, uh, select whom to pay. Mr. Smishko, I have to oppose you. All the anti-corruption laws were passed under pressure of uh, the IMF, uh, uh, IMF wants to have its uh, interest rates, its benefits, but the interest rate in the case of IMF is 3.5 percent, why uh, other, other, uh, other have uh, um, more high interest rates? And what do you mean under middle class? I disagree with you. IMF is extreme external governance. Uh, the anti-corruption laws are inefficient. I, I'm interested in the uh, results, not in the process. I believe that uh, when we put professionals into right positions, we will resolve the problem. The whole world knows what the middle class is. These are people who have uh, uh, accommodation or resi uh, some residential property, a car and some savings. and. Uh, uh, you can uh, 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 independently leave your job at any moment and find another job. Uh, and uh, 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 well-funded uh, uh, pensioners, those who can decide who they want to see their leaders. Mr. Smishko believes that pensioners believe to the middle class. I have a question about security and defense sector formation and economic and business climate. Uh, uh, is EU quite often interferes into the economic activities. So reforming the SBU, whether you will deprive SBU from this function, this economic function, and create uh, just uh, the intelligence and counterintelligence service, and that's it. The real reform of the SBU system was prepared and passed by the president and coordinated with the uh, security committee in the parliament. Uh, was made in 2004. The separated intelligence service and we at that time we suggested uh, the profound reform and of course we should have just the national counter intelligence uh, 
and the intelligence department. That's it, Mr. Borakovsky. I will ask my question very quickly, although I'm afraid uh, to ask questions to Mr. Smishko. He mentioned that he knows something uh, about uh, almost everybody, about oligarchs. On the one hand, the oligarchs, they represent the big enterprises, which are backbone of Ukrainian economy. On the other hand, we want to, we want to see de-oligarchization in this country. So uh, what what you want to uh, take off from our oligarchs and from whom mm, I am a doctor of uh, cybernetics, mm, so billionaires and big uh, industrial uh, in entrepreneurs, they are not oligarchs. Oligarchs are those who have monopoly, who can buy political parties and mass media, who puts their uh, people into pub uh, governmental structures, etc. Of course, we can have such uh, uh, rich uh, entrepreneurs, but we should prevent them from interference into Нас public governance, like Roosevelt in the USA. I have a brief question. Is Leonid Kuchma the creator of oligarchic system? Leonid Kuchma, in the end of his term, created billionaires. But believe me, all of them were not thinking about putting his people into the security service. But under him, there was a model created which, uh, despite the fact that the growth of industry was 12%, per but the middle class was growing, it was unhappy with reforms. But oligarchy was created under Yushchenko. Just remember, who is Firtas, who knew him till 2005. And uh, one, uh, the last statement about Firtas and Yushchenko, you cannot uh, check. Uh, now you have the uh, opportunity to listen to experts from Vox Czech. Lena. If I heard it correctly, Mr. Karnatsky said that you cannot leave the faction at your own desire. You can do that. But that was done by Chumak and the Shevchenko. The faction does not make a decision. We are not arguing with Vokschak. As to Mr. Smishko, you said that it's difficult to buy land in Israel. It's a bad example because in most developed countries, countries, there is a land market and you can buy land in Israel. They have little land. Historically, the situation is different, but approximately 9% land is in private ownership and you can buy and sell it. I, I mean foreigners, yes, even foreigners can. And uh, it's also a small comment, you mixed up the growth of gas tariffs and electricity. Seven and eight, eight for gas and five for electricity. Thank you. Now, voting, my favorite topic. Almost 4,000 people voted, and their opinion is the figures do not change. Mr. Smishko, 98%, Arkady Karnatsky, 2%. But again, that's not sociological survey, just an opinion of our audience. We are not trying to influence the desire of our voters to support this or that candidate. We just give you the chance to compare, to listen to how they view the future of our country. This is not it. We we continue. Now, this is the countdown. We 
have the chance to ask five questions, blitz questions to each one of the guests. I will start from Mr. Smishko. And we start now. Please answer yes or no, or in a few words. First question. Was Nadia Savchenko recruited by Russian special services? Yes or no? No. Was special operation with Arkady Babchenko successful? What do you believe? Yes or no? You know, I don't even remember the details. It's difficult to answer. Thank you. Who's cooler? Security service or uh, general uh, uh, reconnaissance uh, department? These are two hands of one state. Some of the questions are not serious. Is it good or bad that uh, former KGB's uh, persons are uh, ruling Russia, for Russia, and for us it's very bad. Authoritarian system of power is uh, uh, like a parallel government, and that is security service. Are the agents of Russian influence among the uh, current presidential candidates? I believe yes, but to name them, we need to have facts and documents. I'm not part of the government. How many of them? Not one? All those who are saying that we need to have peace at any condition, that means capitulation. Thank you. Now, uh, please, questions to Arkady Karnatsky. Your five questions, yes or no. First, do you have Russian passport? No. Would you take Russian citizenship from the uh, MP and Vadim Novitsky? No. And do you support the Institute uh, of uh, Double Citizenship in Ukraine? There's no institution of double citizenship. Now the citizens of Ukraine can have 100 citizens. Do you believe the Moscow Patriarchy, the agents of Russian influence? Yes. Can Ukrainian stars earn money in Russia? No. These were answers from Arkady Karnatsky. Thank you. Okay, now we'll hear the experts. We have wonderful experts. We thank you, and we are starting from you. Everyone has one minute. Each one, each one has one minute to sum it up. First, Igor Burakovsky. Very brief. I would like to advise all candidates not to start your life and the life of Ukraine from the very beginning. A lot has been done. Say that what was done and that you will continue. Then when you make some uh, proposals or offers, tell us how much this will cost. There are wonderful ideas, but if once there's no money, nothing will happen. That was Igor Burakovsky. The next one, Taras Shevchenko. Uh, thank you for participating in debate for um, uh, coming here, un uh, unlike the third candidate. This is courageous and right, because the citizens should hear their candidates. I have my impression I will not talk about some personal uh, um, conclusions, but I would like to say, as a lawyer, I am convinced that the president and the presidential candidate should uh, very clearly uh, talk about laws and terms and constitution and to say that you can do anything. Unfortunately, as I interpreted it, it hurts me to hear it. We had the presidents who were doing what wasn't provided by the law and who with the words, I'm the guarantor of the constitution, were uh, uh, basically doing everything they wanted. You have to follow laws. The next one, Mikhail Samus, your minute. First of all, I want to congratulate you with this great format. That's democracy. That's an opportunity to hear answers from candidates, to understand the their positions. One thing I would like to wish and to request the candidates to invite more uh, non-governmental analytical centers so that you hear our opinion, because there are many solutions existing. I would like to support Taras Shevchenko that 
You shouldn't be looking for some new solutions. Maybe they are existing. I would like to request you to have more dialogue. Vitaly Shabunin. Your minute. Thank you for coming to debates, to real debates. That uh, is a good example for other candidates. Those who did not come, I believe they have no right to uh, have some supports. I, what I missed is names for the key positions. It would be easier to assess how serious your intentions are. And, Mr. Smishko, I dream about the time when the security service and the intelligence doesn't want to become the instrument for addressing many problems. I believe this time will come. And now we will have a chance to hear the final words from our presidential candidates. Each one of them will have a minute. They can say whatever they want to. So your final word. I would like to draw your attention uh, to the fact that today here we practically saw the uh, root of all our problems for 28 years in Ukraine, starting from when Kuchma came to power, Oligarchat was created. They created all the legislation starting from the Constitution of Ukraine, as well as all the bylaws and regulations, the system of legislation was created according to which everything was stolen, people were robbed, and now the state is getting disassembled. But the most awful thing is that in the society there are few of those who understand what's happening. There are few of those who understand what is the Constitution Constitution, what is the president, what are the powers of the president. If nothing is changed, no, nothing will be changed in Ukraine until we remove all the political elite from power, all those who are in power for 28 years. These are same people. One minute for Igor Smishko. Whatever you call the ship, it will uh, sail like you call it. If we want to build democracy, we need to elect those who know how to build it, what systemic changes are to be implemented in political, economic, in social spheres, how to do decentralization. The main problem, the main for uh, building democracy is uh, poverty, uh, the corruption of political apparatus, incompetence, and unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, friends. Uh, there's an enemy who wants to kill the state. We need to count on ourselves for elements, economics, army, diplomatic, political, and information. We can ourselves build and save Europe. We can save it if we build democracy. And if these four elements are at the highest European level, thank you. I can just uh, summarize the voting. That's the last time we showed this voting. Maybe more people called uh, four and a half thousand. We disagree with the results of voting. The uh, support group of Karnatsky does not agree with this voting. It's not representative. Thank you for voting, for calling us. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you, experts. Thank you, our colleagues from VoxCheck. Thank you, the candidates and all the viewers and guests of our studio. You will decide on the future of the country on Sunday, and we have the chance to meet Wednesday and Friday. Thank you, the candidates. Thank you for not being afraid to have this discussion. Good luck to you. Wednesday, 8.30, Oleg Leshko and Anatoly Gritsenko will be our guests.